Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, Beginning from Jerusalem, you are the witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, made known to us in flesh and spirit, the one who opens our minds and hearts to understand you. Amen. Amen. My very first trip to Guatemala was in March 2003, when I traveled for a fast 24-hour trip to sign paperwork, beginning the adoption process of my first son. I had expected to be in and out of the country within one day. I would go from the airport to the hotel, meet the attorney to sign the papers, and fly out the next morning. What I had not anticipated was when I arrived to the hotel, waiting for me in the lobby was my five-month-old son and his foster mother, Marta. Though I had only hours with my son, I fell completely and hopelessly in love with him and left Guatemala feeling like a piece of my heart had been ripped out and left behind. I could not wait to visit again, and so I planned to go back about two months later. I figured that again I would be staying in a hotel with my son being dropped off as before. But this time, our foster mother, Marta, came to the hotel and invited me to go with her to her home. I remember feeling nervous and confused and even fearful as I rode along with her. As I did not know her, nor Guatemala at all. A conversation in my head was going at full speed. Where was she taking me? Would I be safe? How would I get back? When would I get back? This internal dialogue continued while we drove into increasingly narrow roads lined with concrete homes with metal bars in their windows, forging deeper and deeper into a concrete jungle. All of my senses were on alert, 
and experiencing complete disorientation. I think those disciples in today's gospel story from Luke were also feeling completely disoriented and confused, even fearful of what they were experiencing. They had gone through extensive trauma watching what happened to their friend and their teacher, Jesus, as he was arrested and beaten and crucified. And now his body was missing. As the disciples were talking to some others who had just spoken of the risen Christ appearing to them on the road to Emmaus, Jesus himself appears, standing in front of all of them, saying, peace be with you. Well, this doesn't bring any of them peace initially, does it? Thinking they're seeing a ghost or a spirit, the disciples are now startled and confused and even terrified. And isn't their fearful disorientation a completely reasonable response? As I entered the home of my son's foster mother in my state of fearful disorientation, I was surprised to be immediately greeted by smiling faces and wonderful smells. In the kitchen, Marta's children were busy setting a table full of colorful plates and napkins. Her mother stood in the kitchen, hard at work cooking, but immediately turning toward me with a great big smile on her face, rattling off in a language I had yet to learn, what I knew was a joyful welcome, though I didn't understand any of the words. I was ushered into a chair, my son was placed into his stroller next to me, and we began our meal together. And as a basket was passed around the table with steaming hot tortillas, and as a hard piece of bread was dipped into black refried beans and given to my son, I felt a rush of both familiarity and a new creation. I recognized Jesus made known to me in the sharing of tortillas, in the breaking of bread together. And I saw a newly created family sitting around the table, laughing with joy as my son smeared those black beans all over his face. Love had gushed in and fear and confusion were now displaced by grace. Jesus showed up in flesh and bones to me in that space, just as Jesus showed up in flesh and bones to those disciples after his death and resurrection. He invited those fearful disciples to look at his scars, to touch his body, to watch him eat food. He was not a ghost or spirit, but he was alive in the flesh, risen indeed, the great I am. He then opened their minds so that they had understanding, and he named them as witnesses, who were now called to go out into all the world, making Jesus known to others, proclaiming the forgiveness of sins. This past week, I had the privilege of participating, along with Cantor Ben, in the 2024 Institute of Liturgical Studies at Valpo University, which incidentally is alma mater to some of our members here. One of my greatest delight at Valpo's ILS was to meet composer Anne Krentz Organ, who was the primary composer for our newest Lutheran liturgical setting, number 12. Some of you have noticed, and you might notice today, at the time of Holy Communion, we've been singing, Be Known to Us, Lord Jesus, in the Breaking of This Bread. This was composed by Anne Krentz Organ and is a beautiful foretaste of the feast to come and its meaning. I asked Anne what influenced her writing of this piece, and it was the road to Emmaus passage from Luke's gospel immediately preceding today's reading. The disciples in our story had been joined by two people who had just encountered the risen Christ on the road to Emmaus. At first, they did not recognize this stranger as Jesus. He had been walking alongside them, talking to them about the events of the week, and teaching them about the meaning of Scripture as it related to the life, death, and resurrection of the crucified one. 
Finally, upon reaching their place of lodging for the night, these two invite the unknown stranger to join them. And as they sit down for dinner, and as the unknown stranger takes the bread and blesses it and gives it to them, their eyes are opened. They immediately recognize the stranger as Jesus, made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The focus of be known to us, Lord Jesus, is rooted in the theology of the Eucharist. As the bread is broken and shared, Jesus becomes known to us. His broken body enters our broken bodies, and we are embodied together as the risen Christ. The gathered body of Christ is then sent at the end of this liturgy to go out into the world and to witness as Christ's body to a broken world, making Jesus known to others in our daily encounters, proclaiming grace and forgiveness. We also go out of this place to discover and experience the flesh and bones risen Christ who is ever-present and ready to open our hearts and minds to an ever-deepening understanding of the great I Am. How is Jesus real and alive in our world today? I was experiencing the risen Jesus in that time and place in Guatemala in 2003, and my new family's future was forever changed. And as the months and the years progressed, we continued to gather together and to part ways again and again, and I continued to see Jesus, a smiling abuela always preparing another wonderful meal to share, as children playing peekaboo with my son, making him laugh those deep belly laughs, and as a foster mother working tirelessly to care for our son night and day. These were my first Jesus encounters in Guatemala, and there have been many, many more since then. Of course, Jesus encounters are not limited to Guatemala. Jesus is available to each and every one of us in the flesh, every day. Where is Jesus made known to you and me in our context today? This is the first part of our gospel message today, the second part is revealed in the final verse of today's lesson, which leads us toward Jesus, his ascension, and for the gospel writer of Luke into the book of Acts, where the focus shifts to the disciples, who now not only recognize the resurrected Christ, but through whom the risen Christ is made known to others. They and we are called to be witnesses to reveal, to make known who Jesus is through our own embodied beings. And this is possible only because of the free gift of grace that was given to us at great cost through Jesus Christ. Jesus' resurrection life moves us into the future to be disciples who witness to what the risen Jesus means, not just for ourselves, but for all of humanity and creation. Jesus came to the disciples with a broken body. Jesus' broken body was broken for you and for me. Jesus' body is broken for you and for me. Bring your bro broken body to Jesus. And bring your broken body to the world because the broken people around us need to see and to touch and to eat with and to know Christ through our broken bodies. We experience the real presence of the risen Christ each time we gather here to move through the waters of forgiveness at the font, to settle in with God's gospel word, to chew and digest the body and blood of Jesus' broken body, to then sing as we are joyously sent back into the world around us. Our spiritual home reminds us each week of the promise we have in Jesus of forgiveness of sins and eternal life, freeing us to be Christ's body in the world we encounter each and every day. So come with your scars and wounds like the resurrected Jesus did. Come to the font, 
touch the water. Remember your sins are drowned daily. Come to the word. Let the Holy Spirit bring you good news that moves through your ears into your whole being. Remember, you are loved. Come to music, to singing in community. Remember, you are not alone. Your spiritual home is your harmony and when needed, your melody. Come to the table and receive the body and blood of the risen Christ. Remember, as it enters your body, you are now the body of Christ's church, sent from this place to be Jesus to others and to recognize Jesus in others. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, and be known through us, Lord Jesus. Alleluia. Amen.